And thanks for staying with us. We now cross over to our Abuja studios where Linda is standing by with more stories. Hello, Linda. Hello, Melinda. Lovely evening to you. Now, there's more pressure for the outgoing governor of Ikiti State as the Nigeria Labour Congress in the state is asking the administration to effect payment of arrears of workers' salaries and pensions before bowing out. The NLC says it is holding the government by its earlier promise not to hand over debt of salaries to the incoming administration. The union threatened industrial action if the writing on the wall is not reassuring. About, uh, uh, five months. You go and look inward and start payment of, sal of a backlog of salaries and pension. By looking inward, mop up all funds available, stop developmental projects, and start payment of salary by paying two months' salary monthly between now and the expiration of their tenure. Strike normally is the last resort. We consulted, we are consolidating. But if eventually strike action is the last resort, we wouldn't mind to go. But we still want government to respond to several letters we've written, several communiques that be issued, employing government that they should honor their word of not living as a devil. And that wealth we owe tenaciously to, because we believe Governor Ayodele uh, Oshie will not lie. Desertification is a major environmental challenge confronting states in the northern part of the country. As part of the measures in tackling this, the Castilla state government has entered into partnership with the European Union under the program codenamed EASE, which stands for Energizing Access to Sustainable Energy. The initiative is to improve the conditions for energy efficiency in Nigeria. This land has not always been like this. A combination of drought, deforestation and inappropriate agricultural practices has turned it into a desert, a process known as desertification. The European Union and the state government are working with residents to reclaim their land through the Energizing Access to Sustainable Energy Ease initiative. This is designed to create a balance between demand for wood fuel and the need to protect the vegetal cover. It is important to state that the EAST project aligns with objectives of Economy Recovery Growth Plan, ERGP, of the Federal Government of Nigeria in the area of energy sufficiency in power and petroleum product. I wish to, on behalf of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, thank the European Union delegation for providing this assistance. Uh, and what is a tree planting event without actual planting of trees? The project has so far uh, produced about 5.5 uh, million trees that have been distributed and planted uh, by uh, the five local governments. Um, this covers almost uh, more than 50,000 hectares across the five local governments. So far, so good. We were even appealing to the federal government to extend the future of this project. So that still, still the state government is doing its effort in this uh, regard. But notwithstanding, with their coming, we have gained a lot of benefit from their uh, presence here. In Katsina State, where about one-third of the agricultural land has been damaged due to heavy dependence on wood for energy, these efforts and more can't be more fitting. And in south-south Nigeria, over 12,000 farmers in Cross River State have received farming imputes as part of efforts by the federal government to enhance agricultural productivity across the country. Flagging off the 2018 wet season impute distribution, the Director of Corporate Communication of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Isaac Okurafo, commended the state government for setting up the rice seeds and seedlings factory to boost productivity. Predictions of rains is not always a bad sign, as in wet season, farmers look forward to consistent rains to nurture their crops. Those in Cross River State in south-south Nigeria are glad as they look forward to a bumper harvest. 
Over 12,000 registered farmers drawn from the state's 18 local government areas are set to receive farm inputs from the federal government. The 2018 wet season input distribution is part of efforts to enhance productivity in agriculture across the country. Cross River State has over 12,000 farmers uh, for this wet season and we have come here to distribute the inputs, fertilizer, pesticides, herbicides, uh, pump, even including the pumping machine to be able to ensure that um, enough water is in their farms. So the CBN mechanism that CBN has uh, put in place to ensure that uh, only genuine farmers take part in the Anchor Borough's program. According to the Cross River State Governor, Professor Ben Ayadi, the state is expanding its farming horizon by also investing in areas beyond rice farming. Right here you are going to have the first automated chicken processing factory. It will come from here. And what is, what is keeping the frozen chicken business is the maize you are growing. And for you to be able to grow your maize, I have to work with Central Bank to provide money for you to grow your maize, to provide a road for you to go to the farm, so that I stop you from working too hard. The farmers appreciate the CBN and the state government for the gesture, which they say will increase their yields. With what they have given to us, we can farm all year round. This is the first time in the history of Cross River States that we are going to start with what they call dry season farming. We are actually going to do it with the hand pumps that they have given to us. The items distributed are strictly for registered farmers who have been captured electronically into a major data system in the state. That's all from Abuja. Back to you, Melinda. Many thanks, Linda. The NBA president says there is no cause for alarm with regards to the electoral process of voting in the next bar leadership. The NBA president, Mr. Abubakar Mahmoud, explained that there is nothing wrong with the verification process as the association has reviewed the process and investigated issues raised in some quarters on the integrity and transparency of the exercise. He was speaking while briefing judiciary correspondents in Abuja about the preparations for the election and other issues relating to the annual general conference of the NBA. Yes, it's true there's a requirement of the Constitution for us to hold in July, but it's not a complete watertight situation that renders it illegal to hold election else uh, at any other time. Um, the, ele the election, the Constitution also does require us to hold free, fair and credible election. But we're confident, given all the assurances and all the uh, processes that have been put in place, that the process is extremely transparent. In fact, I make bold to say that there has been no previous election of the MBA that has been as open, as transparent and as participatory as this one. So we are confident the outcome will be acceptable uh, by all parties. And of course, uh, there is a post-audit process which also allows for all, the, uh, all that has happened to be audited and the audit uh, will be handled completely by an outside, I mean, an, a different entity. So with all the safeguards, and being that it's an electronic uh, process and there is a tra audit trail and that this is being handled very professionally, uh, we don't think that, we don't envisage that there will be a dispute. If however there is, uh, of course the dispute resolution processes in the MBA constitution will then have to uh, up to uh, kick and uh, hopefully those will be resolved within that framework. Some company news now. According to Record Benkiza, makers of Harpic toilet cleaner and other sanitary products, it's possible to put an end to open defecation in the country. To start the process, the company has commissioned newly refurbished toilets at the new garage in Ojota, Lagos State. It is said that good hygiene and sanitation make a big difference between disease and health. One of the unsanitary habits that causes concern in Nigeria is open defecation. It takes the hope and prayer. That's why staff of Rekid Benkisa at the Ojota New Garage, among workers at the park, to commission a newly refurbished toilet block. Project Harpe, this is just one small step, the company Rekid Benkisa and the brand Harpe, it's just a small step that we're taking 
in this huge journey of sanitation. 47 million of Nigerians are involved with open defecation. It's quite a large number. And it's actually something that is not necessary. Dignitaries proceed to commission the refurbished facility, which sports a fresh coat of paint. On behalf of Federal State Government, and for the If APIC and Rekid Bekista has done the renovation, upgraded it and given it the international standard, we should be able to use it and sustain it. Members of the public would do well to heed this advice in the light of consequences that could result from open defecation. 90% of the diarrhea occasions can be traced back to diseases coming from poor sanitation and open defecation contributes to uh, poor sanitation. So we've been in Nigeria for decades, right? We are married to this land. We have our own manufacturing facility. The quality of the products that come out of our factory in Akbara is anywhere comparable to anywhere in the globe. Rekit Benkisa is also commissioning refurbished toilet facilities at Kappa in Oshodi. Alausa and Kostain totaling 25 units and has a bigger dream of getting into every neighborhood until everyone has access to a clean and safe toilet. In Kano State, one person has been reported dead in Dambata local government area following a flood disaster. The downpour, which is said to have started at about 4 p.m. and lasted for four hours, destroyed several houses. Eyewitnesses told Channel's television that over 100 shops were also destroyed by the windstorm within the area. Many of the residents have been rendered homeless as a result of the disaster as they call on the government to come to their aid. And let's move to the world of business, where the World Bank is asking African countries to have better trade relations and has more on that and other stories. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Melinda. The Vice President of the World Bank in charge of Africa, Havers Ghanem, has asked countries on the continent to consider increasing access to markets within the region to help offset the effects of increased protectionism from the United States. Mr. Ghanem, who said this in Abuja, emphasized the need for African economies to strengthen trade relations and absorb costs arising from the hike in tariffs. Meanwhile, a survey by Bloomberg indicates that Nigeria, South Africa and Namibia accounted for more than 35% of intra african Africa trade last year, with South Africa contributing a quarter of the region's domestic commerce in 2017, mostly in oil imports from Nigeria and Angola. The Central Bank of Nigeria is calling for the strengthening of the existing microfinance structure in the country in order to actualize the national drive for financial inclusiveness and reduce unemployment. The CBN's Deputy Governor of Financial System Stability told a conference in Abuja that microfinance banks are yet to reach their full potential, even though they are key drivers to the micro, small and medium enterprises in the country. Over the years, successive governments have recognized the role of micro, small and medium enterprises in growing Nigeria's economy. Hence, the various policy reforms, including that which brought about microfinance banks in 2005 which was aimed at addressing the financial needs of small business operators. Fast forward to 2018. The financial needs of the small businesses in Nigeria have only been marginally met. To reverse this trend, financial experts are meeting at this conference in Abuja to discuss how to make microfinance banks work better and enhance financial inclusiveness for small businesses. Despite the large number of licensed microfinance banks, at last count, over 1,008 as of June 2018, we can say that the objectives underlying the policy have only been marginally attained. Like many other developing countries, this sector is crucial to job creation. Strengthening MSMEs is very critical if we are to reduce unemployment, if we are to reduce financial exclusion, and if we are to achieve economic growth. According to the Central Bank of Nigeria, 
There were 1,008 registered microfinance banks in Nigeria as at the end of June this year. They provided only 1.1% of the total credit provided in 2016. Access to deposit banks was also put at a meager 1%. In order to improve the performance of microfinance banks in Nigeria, participants at this conference argue strongly on the urgent need to strengthen the existing structure. There is a deeper fundamental problem of microfinance models in Nigeria. The fundamental challenge that we have in Nigeria today in the management of our economy is that we have not understood enough how capitalist economies create wealth. According to the central bank, micro, small and medium enterprises in Nigeria account for an estimated 60% of the gross domestic product and also provide about 90% of all employment. For many participants at this conference, these statistics explain why microfinance banks should be made to function properly in Nigeria to provide the needed financial backing for small businesses. Well, the color is red today at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. It has ended the week with sell pressure hitting bell bellwether stocks from five key sectors of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Teniola Shibawali has the details for us. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Friday's transaction at the local equities market ends with a reversal of the marginal gains recorded in Thursday's session following renewed profits by short-term investors. The all-share index lowered by 0.52%, representing a 69 billion naira drop in the equities capitalization as sell-offs hit three major counters of the NSE. Performance on the price chart was also negative, with mutual benefit and XA Mansard in the lead of 28 losers, while Union Diagnostics and Beta Glass Equity Assurance led 15 other gainers by 10% each. Compared to Thursday's session, volume of shares traded for the day lowered by 54.05 million units to over 260 million, led for a second session by the shares of NACO. And that's the stock market report and Teniola Shubawali. Thank you, Tenny Alawa. Well, outside Nigeria's stock market, major global equities have also closed today's session slightly mixed, with Wall Street still basking in the $1 trillion market milestone reached with the Apple giants, while investors in Asia remain very cautious of the U.S.-China trade tensions. Let's check out the numbers for today. Thank you for watching Business News tonight. I'm Anne Wawadu. Have a great weekend ahead. It's back to you, Melinda. You first. First Bank. I'm sure they will. Many thanks, Anne. And still ahead on the news at 10, more medals for Team Nigeria as the women's 4x100 meters relay team and long jumper S.A. Brume strike gold on day three of the 2018 African Senior Athletics Championships. That's on Sports News. Stay with us. <laughs>